command array. The array command is a great command to actually copy objects. In this video we want to show you three things, namely first how to use that in row and columns, second how to, around, uh, to do that around a central point and third how to do it along a path. In this video we'll show you how to create various types of array in order to get exactly the result you're looking for. So please watch. To show you what we can do with a rectangular array, let's imagine we have here the side of a building we would like to fill with windows. We've already drawn one, we just want to copy it from left to right and from bottom to top. Nothing easier than that. I've already switched off or made invisible one dimension layer I don't want to see. And all I have to do is click on my array button up here and say these objects, press enter, and Auto AutoCAD automatically copies our initial objects four times from left to right and three times from the bottom to the top. Now it automatically calculates some kind of value based on the size of our objects. We don't need to worry about that at all. All we have to do is decide what would I actually like as a value in these various boxes. Now I'm going to start with six columns. Um, between these columns I think I would like three and a half meters and I would like four rows and between my rows I'm going to have a floor to floor height say of 3200 millimeters. I don't need to worry about a Z value since I'm not going to be copying these in the Z directions or in sort of perpendicular to the plane of the paper. In two dimensions that doesn't make any sense. We don't need to worry about that at all. I have here a button to decide whether I want this array object to remain as an array object. That means to be associative. I can put that off if I, if I want. If we do put it off, all it means is that we have a number of objects. To be precise, we have 6 times 4, that's 24 separate windows. I'm going to leave it associative and we can see what kind of advantage that gives us afterwards. Let's just close our array then. And there we have it. And if we move with a cursor over our objects, we can see that's still seen as one object, even though the, the array command is actually finished. What does that mean? That means that when I mark it once with a left click, I can go back into this and say, oh, I don't want six columns, I want five. Or I would like, like to stay at six columns, but between I would like to have three meters 40, or 3,400 millimeters, or three rows. Whatever, I can change these indefinitely, as much as I like. Okay, let's close that. Wonderful, I'm finished. Well, maybe not quite. Maybe at some point I see, okay, I actually have a, an entrance here, and so I'm not going to have these normal windows. I'm going to have some kind of other windows or doors or whatever, or maybe it's just different. Can we change them or can we leave them out? Of course we can. Instead of marking it with one simple left click, I'm going to mark these two windows here while pressing my control button. That's usually somewhere bottom left on our keyboard. I select that one and that one and I press my delete button and they're gone. Isn't that wonderful? Now let's say in addition to that, I have these two windows here. Now I still want a window there, I just, I just don't want it to look like it does right now. Now I can actually replace these, that's no problem. I have here one I had already in uh, true Blue Peter style. Here's one we prepared earlier. I would like this window to replace these two here. Now in order to make it easy, I'm going to define my insertion point for this for the purpose of this this exchange is here bottom left and it makes it easier if I've done the same here so I'm going to mark that and then I can go here to base point I'm going to make the base point here bottom left and then when I say now replace item it asks me select replacement objects that's this one here enter 
select base point of replacement object as I said here yeah, bottom left select an item in the array to replace now that's these two here so that one and that one and they instantly changed okay I don't know about you but I get slightly irritated when I have something large like this every time I go over with my cursor it actually uh, lights up as it were it gets marked and that can be a little bit irritating when you have a large object like this and if it's really large maybe you're working on a project with a large block that can be that can be really distracting and take time because the computer has to do a bit more heavy thinking there is actually an option with which you can change that here by selection selection preview when no command is active I'm going to put that particular option out uncheck it as it were say OK and now when I go over with the object with my cursor nothing happens first when I either click on it it's all marked or if I say something like move or whatever then it says oh you could choose this object now there is one thing we haven't done yet and that's to actually change one of the objects in my existing array that's no problem I can just mark it one left click that was click here on edit source now I don't have to take the first one which I drew I can take any of these objects I'm just going to take this one pretending it's somehow easier press escape once then all my other ones disappear I'm going to stretch my outer rectangle first 200 to the right and my block is actually dynamic so I can just click here on the right hand corner adjust that save changes and as you can see all of my blocks all of my windows have now become 2320 millimeters wide now I rather suspect I've forgotten something there I'm going to have to change this as well but that's not a problem there we go my dimensions there were previously concealed one last thing when it comes to changes if I mark this we see here this option reset array that means I can basically restore it to factory settings so how it was before I eliminated these two objects and replaced these two so that's pretty much it as far as rectangular arrays go the only thing perhaps which remains to mention is if I actually just want single objects nothing simpler than that I could for example just click here on explode tack boom as they say and there I have all of my elements as individual elements again the second array command we want to talk about is a polar array that means copying objects around a fixed point I'm going to use a classic example here a round table one chair which I want to copy around the table I call out my array command click there to go through the options there it is polar array I choose my chair enter choose the center of the table and what AutoCAD does is just as with a rectangular array we have four columns and three rows here we, we have six copies filling 360 degrees now I can change that if I want I can put here 8 I can decide I don't want a full 360 degrees I can take 3 quarters 270 degrees if I do that I can change the direction here so it rotates clockwise instead of anti-clockwise I can also decide if I want to rotate my items or not no problem just click through those as I want I can decide to have it associative that means that it will remain as an array object after I'm finished or not which would mean I would just have separate objects which I've copied here I'm going to leave it associative fill 360 degrees but what I'm going to do is imagine that in the second row so I'm going to have two rows I would like twice as many chairs so instead of having eight I'm going to put 16 here Oops. which is actually too many for my first row but no problem I'm just going to take those out close array 
Now with my left thumb pressing my control button on the keyboard, I'm just going to take out the ones I don't want, which is that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, da -da 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 -da. delete, and they're gone. So that's one way of having two rows. Polar Array is really very simple. Our next option is our Path Array. Now I'm just going to use a spline here to show how we can use that. Path Array, it says select objects, meaning my chair. Enter, select path curve, that's my spline. Tick. All of my chairs are copied along this. Now how does it do it? We have here two options. If I look here to measure, I can change that to divide. Now what is actually meant is that measure will copy these objects with a fixed distance, a measured distance, which I can adjust here. I could put it up to a, a thousand millimeters, for example. Or I can say, and that's the point of this one, divide, divide my to total length by the number of items. So I could say here, I don't want 16, but I would like 20 chairs. And then it divides up my line by 20 or 22. I can just adjust that until I'm finished. I can, of course, add extra rows or add extra things in the Z direction. I can change the tangent, align items or not and so on. Now for a lot of practical purposes this isn't really very useful because as soon as my curve gets a little bit narrower the distance between my objects changes. Why is that? Well it's because what our AutoCAD does is measure the length of line which there is between the objects. So if the line has a very tight curve to it then the, the distance in terms of this, the straight line distance between my objects is of course a lot smaller. And if you're wanting to distribute objects with a fixed measured length, then this isn't really a great help. But one thing I have used it for is the following circumstance. I have here two walls, and between these two walls there should be some kind of a window element or a facade element. I've already put in my profile, and I've drawn here a construction line. This construction line goes from the axis line of this particular profile to an equivalent distance from my other wall. So what I can do now is select my path array. Select objects is of course my window profile. Path curve is of course that line. I want to have these according to divide. I think in fact 21 items is a little bit exaggerated. I'll see how 6 works out. I have a distance between them of 772. Let's try with 5. Yeah, that looks that looks fine. Close array. Now I'm going to say I have no need of this particular profile here. So I'm going to mark that with control pressed arrays. And what mean what it means is that as soon as I change the length of this line, the distances between my profile packets here are automatically changed. So if I'm on the building site and I measure it out and find it's not 3,970 but is actually 4,000, so that's 30 millimeters larger, the distance between these objects is automatically changed. In actual fact, if I'm doing a proper drawing here, I have of course not only my profiles but I also have some kind of a packet with my, with my various objects in there, my glass and, and other lines and so on. And these wouldn't change in the length automatically with the change in the, the axis distance between my profiles. So I still have to do that by hand. But it does, of course, mean that at least one aspect of this is changed at least half automatically. And if I have the other objects as a block, then I can change those in, in one go and they will be fitting all over. So that was Array Along a Path. Well, that was fun. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a good thumbs up as everybody on YouTube likes this. As well, if you have questions, if you would like another video, if you have problems with your drawing, don't hesitate to contact us. You can see where and how now. And we look forward to hear from you.
if you find that these videos, which we actually quite regularly post, help you really in your work and your drawings, why don't you subscribe to our channel and you will get information as soon as we post something and you can benefit from it. So hope to see you soon. Bye.